campus. What do you say to the, to the kids that have grown up thinking that evolution is proven by the fossil record? What, what are the things that you use? Give them a mathematical model. I mean, one of the things we're trying to do in uh, university campuses is say, if you're going to work in this discipline, you have to integrate mathematics with biology. Here's the principle. Uh, most mutations, or many more mutations, are negative than those that are beneficial. The best you get is a ratio of 10,000 to 1. In other words, mutations will tend to drive a species to extinction before it has an opportunity to naturally evolve, unless it has a truly enormous population size, more than a quadrillion, a body size less than one centimeter, and a generation time briefer than three months. Now you can go to the field biologists. Where do you see speciation going on in the real world? They only see it for those species that match the mathematical limits. Those that don't, all they see are extinctions. Right. Because those folks out there are simply saying, both you guys are wrong. The fact is evolution did, did, did take place. But uh, I think most of our students recognize that even people like Gould at Harvard are making a shift here. Uh, punctuated equilibrium is really uh, uh, going against what they originally started out with. All of a sudden it just appears in the record. What Comment on this, please. Well, it's an excellent point because what Gould and Niles Eldridge are trying to do is make evolution work where the mathematics tells us it is the lowest possible probability. I mean, when the species population drops down to a few thousand, you get a zero probability of evolutionary advance. When you look at the fossil record, where do you see the evidence for the so-called uh, um, transitional forms? It's creatures like whales and horses. And these are creatures with population levels so small, generation times so long, body sizes so huge, they have a zero probability for evolutionary advance. They're even lower than our probability for evolutionary advance. Yet we see these, all these transitions. My explanation for that, God loves horses and whales. He knows because of their huge size and small populations, they're going to go extinct rapidly. When, he do, that, when they do, he makes new ones. 